Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode, powered by Hayabusa, has to be one of the scariest things that happens in martial arts, and that's five different ways to avoid your shin from breaking when throwing a low kick. Today's episode, we're discussing one of the scariest things that can happen in combat sports, and that's breaking your shin. And it's a hot topic right now because it just happened with Chris Weidman. And it's happened about three times in the UFC. We've seen it with Corey Hill the first time, which was, to me, one of the nastiest ones. Anderson Silva, now Chris Weidman. And we actually saw one time in glory when we saw Tyrone Spong fight Go Kensaki, and I actually was there live for that one, which was nasty to see. So, it's something that we're all scared to to happen to us. So every time we get into a fight, there's a lot of people who are more hesitant, more cautious, and then there's those savages who just go right after and start blasting away on those calves and legs. But when we talk about the difference of why we might see this happen more is an issue. Because we're going below the knee now and this calf kick has become very popular, it's very easy for you to hurt your foot and your shin. And the problem is, even if you're attacking the quad, which is your traditional low kick, if someone even brings their block up slightly, you're really hitting the knee now, which is one of the strong objects. Everything is in line. And depending on that angle, it's very dangerous. So I'm gonna give you different tips. And me being a low kicker, right? That's what I base my whole career on. And I've never really damaged my shin. I can tell you maybe one time in my career where I really hurt my shin. And that's when after catching a body kick, I threw the kick off and I went in for like a nice punch style low kick. And just one quick second, it was Gregory Choplin was able to block just about an inch off the ground and my mid shin hit his knee, which was a good block on his part. But usually that timing always lands and I get away with those kicks. But that's the one time I can say that my shin was really, really hurt in a fight. So let's get into the different ways you can use the low kick properly now. now you can look at my career and you can look back at my training and all my videos and I talk about not committing all the time. You don't have to turn your hip all the time and pivot on every kick. So tip one is understanding where to land on your foot or your shin. When I'm throwing in the beginning of a fight, I'm a little bit more cautious, a little bit more relaxed. I'm not just gonna go in with those big hard low kicks. So what I do is I use more of the instep of my foot and I'm not gonna pivot much on my kick. So by keeping my, you know, my lead foot here and just using my instep as a feeler, right? That's how you're gonna be able to go in there, find your distance, find your timing, find your range. So it's using the instep. Right, so if I'm tapping with my instep, it just lets me feel the range. It's just like throwing a probing jab, right? You're touching, finding your range. You don't always start to fight with these hard punches, right? Feel the distance, feel the range, feel the timing. So using your instep first is a good key. Don't come out there and start looking for those big power shots with the mid shin, right? Every time I talk about shin placement, usually the bottom, the instep is more of your feelers. Touch, hit, more controlled, long range, right? That's what we want in the beginning of a fight. I need to stay away from those long punches, so using the instep keeps me a little further away, okay? But if I just go in there and close my distance, one, I'm closer to punches, two, it's more dangerous, and your shins aren't warmed up. You don't have that time, and so play around with using the instep or the lower part of your shin when you first start the fight. Get the timing. Now, I briefly mentioned in the first one, but the second thing you have to do is have an understanding between setup and finish low kicks. There's a big difference, right? Just like a probing jab versus the spear jab, you know, you know, a setup right hand versus a power. You have to understand that you can change the intensity or how much you uh, power you throw in each strike, right? Okay, so let's talk about it with setup versus finish low kicks. So if I'm throwing a setup low kick, it's like using the, my instep like I talked about in point one. It's the feeler, it's the timing, but constantly hitting with my instep on the quad, hitting the cap, those little shots really hurt. I mean, if you've ever been hit with a hard instep low kick on the quad, you'll notice that those are the loud smack ones. You'll even leave, usually the foot, you'll see the toe marks on your opponent's legs of the damaging low kick. So there's still damage created in those setup low kicks, but it's safer for you to throw. That is the key. So a setup low kick, I'm not pivoting much, right? If I'm sitting here and I'm really pivoting and throwing my kick in, that's a lot of weight. So say I'm, I'm throwing a kick and all of a sudden I see my opponent shifting his weight backwards, maybe getting that leg up to block. 
I will change the intensity of my kick. I'm not going to go throw that power kick. I'm going to adjust and throw my setup kick. Setup. And then once I have the timing, that's when I'm going to step in and throw my finish low kicks. And the finish low kick, I'm going to hit higher up on my shin. I'm going to hit with more power. And most likely, I'm going to come down a little bit on angle to be able to get that gravity to get more weight behind the kick. So. One, point one, use the instep as a feeler. Long range, set it up, touch it. Point two, set up and finish, right? Change that little bit of, you know, pivot, where you land, all is very important. All right, now the third part to a successfully landed low kick, right? I don't want them to block it. I'm gonna break my shin if they block it. So how do I throw my low kick without them blocking? And that where, that's where timing is very important. So the three best ways that I can describe to throw a low kick with good timing, not to get blocked and not to break your shin, would be one, the draw attack. When someone punch, when I'm drawing someone in, they're stepping towards me. And when they step, they put weight on their front leg. They step, whether it's a step to close distance or it's a step to jab or a step to punch, the weight has to go on the front leg. So when the weight's on the front leg, which means now they can't block. So by me doing these draw attacks, boom, hit the leg, right? So let me just, since I've talked about the other points, let's bring it with the uh, appropriate language. So one, I'm gonna draw them in to get them to step heavy. Now I'm gonna use a feeler low kick, the base, the instep, to make sure they're not baiting me in to block or baiting me in to counter. So when I'm drawing them in, I'm using my instep, using my setup low kicks. If they're really stepping heavy and throwing those big punches, and the best example you'll see in my career, watch when I fought Francois Ambang. He was a big, heavy power punch. So what did I do? Set up low kick, set up low kick. As the fight progressed, I got more comfortable. I got his timing, and those draw attacks were killing him. And that's when I was able to eventually turn those you know, setup kicks into finish kicks, which got me the finish at the end. Watch that fight now with the same type of knowledge that I've given you to see my setup versus my finish low kicks. It's even done and shown well with Raymond Daniels. I've done it with Nikki Holtzkin because Holtzkin started blocking my low kick. So I have to be a little bit more creative with my timing. Okay. The second thing that I, the timing that I use is the push off, right? So if I draw you in, I hit you. But now say we engage in a little bit of a clinch or a close battle. As soon as my opponent leaves, that's when I attack the leg, right? So as soon as someone exits, that's when you attack the leg. So whether they're coming forward or moving backwards, they can't block the low kick and this is where you need to time the leg. The third timing that I like to use for my pressure fighters, you know, watching the channel, if I'm pressuring someone and they move laterally, right, I want to, as soon as they move lateral, that's when I attack the leg, right? So moving here, boom, I attack the leg in the direction that they're stepping. That's called lateral track low kicks. As they step out, I hit, right? So that's another way of attacking the leg with good timing and your opponent not blocking, right? them not blocking, which means your shin is safe, you're creating damage, and your shin leaves the fight safely. Now, another thing you can do is you can use different types of angles. So even when I'm draw attacking, I might step out, right? If someone's block is coming up here and the block's coming out, I might want to angle out and then hit the leg. So taking little steps out will help, especially if the block's coming out this way, right? If I step out in that direction and hit on the angle, it's very difficult to be able to block. And if they do, at least I'm hitting around the side of the calf or the leg or behind. Right, so this way, even if the block comes out on an angle, I can still land it successfully. So attacking on center line, then mixing out those angles will just help you land more successfully. Okay, and the last thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you present some punches. You wanna create an attention, a distraction. If you're just low kicking and your opponent is expecting it, what happens is you get that traditional, you know, Thai style where I'm light on my lead leg because I know you're gonna attack me. So this is where the importance of using setup punches to get the kicks important. So when we saw the big damaging happen, the Chris Weidman, there was no real setup to it, right? It was more of throwing a low kick as a single. By just attacking a hard single off the start, right? There's no instep, there's no setup, there's no timing, there's no draw attack, and you don't know, right? The big counter was there. It could have been a big counter punch that caught Weidman, right? So what should have happened is more of a setup with the punches. So by even just throwing, occupying, right, my opponent thinks I'm gonna punch, so right away the attention 
gets away from the leg and it's upstairs to the head. Once my attention to my opponent's up here, boom, that's when I go hard to the leg. Boom, I attack the legs, right? Because now they're not thinking about blocking, they're thinking about defending their head. When they think about defending their head, it opens up the leg, which allows me now to attack the leg safely. Okay, so quick recap, throwing the low kick with big power singles off the start is dangerous, right? We need to set them up, and that's the importance. Set up versus finish, low shin versus high shin. The way you time it, draw them in, lateral track them, push them off. Those are what I call in my curriculum, landing free low kicks. If you can land a free low kick, it means that your opponent one has to take the damage and they can't block them. We want free things in life and no better thing than a free low kick, right? And now if you're gonna throw them, make sure we do set them up, right? Get the distraction moving. And say you do throw a setup kick, right? One of my ways of thinking, right? What do we usually see when everyone throws? A single power kick, right? Or punch to kick. This is where you need to start getting creative. And some of my best low kicks that I land happen to go kick, punch, kick combinations. And within that same combination, the first kick is a setup, the punches create the distraction, and guess what that finished low kick is? It's coming hard, it's coming high shin, because my opponent's so busy blocking punches upstairs that they forgot about the leg. Or they're trying to retreat from the power punches. As soon as they retreat, that's my timing. I take that leg home and boom, I finish it right off. Okay, so landing free low kicks is the key to avoid your shin from getting broken. And you learned it here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. And if you wanna continue training, you can online, which was just launched, bazookatraining.com. And for the month of May, 2021, use the code bazooka50 to get 50% off your first month, okay? So head over to bazookatraining.com, stay learning. There's three sections. You can do home workouts, bag workouts, and tutorials. There's a question and answer where you can put in suggestions of the type of workouts you want. So bazookatraining.com is changing the online martial arts world. All right, if you like the videos, make sure you like, keep subscribing, HayabusaFight.com. This episode was powered by, their gear is phenomenal. Make sure you check it out with the description below. Perfect Sports Nutrition, code Bazooka20. Link in the description as well to get 20% off of your supplements. And the Bazooka merchandise, BazookaShop.com. There's a link on BazookaTraining.com as well. So we'll see you next time. Keep learning, keep training on all the Bazooka platforms. Over one year in lockdown, an empty gym, a divided community, many questions unanswered. They're doing the best they can, uh, trying to save their business. But on one man's 36th birthday, he decided yes. to fight back. <laughs> Subscribe now for only $9.99 USD a month. Bazooka Training dot com.